it's really a privilege to be able to have this opportunity to share a few thoughts with this honorable and distinguished gathering about a topic that I'm very passionate about. And I started working on the research on this topic since 1983. It's a topic of forgiveness. And I began looking and exploring Fathullah Golen's perspective, his conceptualization of the topic about three years ago. So I do not claim to have the complete understanding of Fathullah Golen's unforgiveness. I'm still a student, so I'll share with you what I have learned so far. You know that the topic of forgiveness is not new, it's ancient, it's complex, but it has been for a long time the exclusive lot of philosophers, theologians. It's only in the last three decades that academicians, especially in the help and professional, the profession, paid, started paying attention to it, owing to its restorative, humanizing, and helpful functions. When I looked at the literature to look at how many scholars, Muslim scholars, have paid attention and written extensively on the topic, and I'd, I was not able to find many, very few. I was a bit disappointed, not that the topic is not important for Muslims, it is, but it seems like it did not get the attention it deserved. It wasn't until I turned to Fathullah Gulen's books and writings and the interviews that were conducted with him that I began to understand more about the perspective, uh, Islamic perspective on forgiveness, both as an idea, but also forgiveness in action, how to forgive. The book that Dr. Weller referred to earlier that is on display outside toward global civilization of love and tolerance. In that book, Fathullah Gulen refers to forgiveness 61 times, 61 times, and he has a chapter devoted to the topic of forgiveness. As I read his ideas on forgiveness, I began to feel that Fathullah Gulen really is talking about a renaissance of the heart. Now academicians refer to it as heart work. It's a play in the word hard work. It is also hard work. And his ongoing efforts toward this renaissance of the heart, I believe, is among some of the reasons that Fathullah Gulen was placed among the top 20 intellectuals, public intellectuals, by the Foreign uh, Prospect and Policy in 2008 that we saw earlier in the video, which was at the beginning of the program this morning. The concepts of love, peace, and tolerance, which are prerequisites to forgiveness, really stand out as prominent qualities and attributes that so define Fathullah Gulen himself, as well as the movement that he has inspired and continues to inspire. In the foreword to the book that I just mentioned, Father Thomas Mitchell used the term agent and witness to God's universal mercy. I believe the pronouncements, the teachings, and the actions of Fathullah Gulen easily place him among the world's top agents and witnesses to God's universal mercy. After this laudatory introduction, what is Fathullah Gulen's perspective? So I will turn to that. I will organize my thoughts, the presentation. First, I'm going to give you the grounding of Fathullah Gulen's from which he conceptualized forgiveness. And then I'm going to share with you three dimensions, critical keys to forgiveness. 
then I'll turn to forgiveness in action where an incident that happened to Fathullah Gulen and he went through a process to forgive those who unjustly and deeply uh, hurt him. Fathullah Gulen very easily defined forgiveness as a definition that it took us at the University of Wisconsin-Madison three to four years to come up with. He defines it as a return to our essence and finding ourselves again. In that way, forgiveness is a humanizing, is restorative, and is healthful. In order to fully, to fully understand and comprehend Fatullah Golan's perspective, we need to know that his perspective is deeply rooted in his Islamic faith, and he views forgiveness as a supererogatory or merciful act. He always refers to the primary sources of the Quran, as well as the traditions, the hadith of the Prophet, to teach about or support his forgiving and peaceful stances. In one of his sermons, Fatullah Gulen cited this hadith. It's a divine hadith, Hadith Qudsi. With, without doubt, my mercy precedes my wrath. And the Quranic verses, there are two or three that he cites which are essential to understanding this grounding in the primary sources. My mercy extends to all things. And another verse, they swallow their anger and forgive people, and God loves those who do good. Fatullah Gulen points out that the divine attribute of mercy is foundational to the concept of forgiveness. Fatullah Gulen says, God, without showing any exception, nurtures and protects all human beings, and he continues to give sustenance even to those who deny him. Now I turn to the three dimensions and the three keys to the conception or conceptualization of Fatullah Gulen's of forgiveness. The first one is termed patient endurance, which appeared in one of the verses I cited. This is derived from the Quranic verse, and if you have to respond to any wrong, respond to the extent of the wrong done to you. But if you endure patiently, that's the key, this is indeed better for he who endures. The notion of patient endurance, where a person buries the pain in his or her chest, is synonymous to the Christian notion of absorption or absorbing uh, the pain, which paradoxically frees the individual or the forgiver from the pain. This pious act of burying the pain is not to be confused, however, with the psychological concept of repression, which is a natural response to pain, but if left and addressed, it could grow and fester. So the first key is patient endurance. The second key has been alluded to by my colleagues, um, Dr. Malak and Dr. Um, Mark Wells, I almost blanked on your last name, I'm sorry, uh, is the use of tolerance as almost synonymous to forgiveness. So, so tolerance in the way that Dr. Wells uh, defined it as extending respect to the other, and Ma Dr. Malik said also acceptance. And this brings to mind uh, a saying of Imam Ali, the fourth Khalifa, who said to uh, a, a gathering that people are two kinds, a brother to you in faith or an equal to you in creation. That equal to you in creation is deserving of the respect, the kindness, the forbearance, uh, and the respect as a human being because he or she is equal to you. In one of the speeches, Golan, in 2006, referred to Prophet Muhammad's example of tolerance and forgiveness, especially with the people of Mecca, who were violently hostile to him. They fought him, expelled him, conspired to kill him, and did everything 
they could to annihilate him and his followers. When the conquest of Mecca occurred, the hostile Meccans were anxious. What is the prophet going to do to us after all that we did to him? As a sign of his vast compassion and mercy, the prophet said to them, I speak as Joseph spoke to his brothers. There is no reproach for you today because of your previous acts. God will forgive you also. He is the most merciful of, of the merciful. Go, you are free. A second example of, of uh, kindness, forbearance, and tolerance that Fathullah Gulen uses as an example to promote tolerance is when someone called Abdullah ibn Ubay, who had been a lifelong enemy of the Prophet, he died. And the Prophet demonstrated his tolerance and compassion by giving his shirt as a burial shroud and said, as long as there is no revelation forbidding me from attending the funeral, I will go. So for, for Golan, since tolerance is rooted in the Holy Quran and manifested in the actions of the Prophet, a Muslim's thoughts, feelings, and actions must be congruent with these sources. In the same speech given in 2004, Fatullah Gulen proposed that platform for tolerance should be developed in our society. Tolerance should be rewarded. It should be given precedence at every opportunity. And tolerance must permeate all of society, so much so that universities should breathe tolerance, politicians should talk about tolerance, people in the music world should write lyrics about tolerance, and the media should give support to positive developments concerning tolerance. I have half the presentation and two minutes to go. So I'll I'll share with you the third dimension. So we'll, we'll, we'll honor the perspective of Golan of, of forgiveness. Patient endurance, tolerance, and the third is the concept of compassion, which also combines empathy and sympathy. As an example for the type of compassion that Golan talks about, Golan again turns to Prophet Muhammad's life for inspiration. More specifically, Fatullah Golan refers to an incident in which the Prophet was wounded severely in the Battle of Uhud. And the Prophet manifested his love and compassion by raising his hands and offering this prayer. O oh God, forgive my people, for they do not know. In the face of hatred, hostility, and ignorance, there was love and compassion. That's why it's hard work and it's hard work. I will conclude with this about Fatullah Gulen's perspective of forgiveness. He thinks of it as an unconditional act. And I quote, he said, when you show love to people, you should not expect a favor in return. There would be no end to it if you do. You must love people unconditionally. I should end here. Thank you so much.